What's up guys, Cliff with the Sunday Drive and today we're gonna to show you how to do an oil change on your fifth gen V6 Camaro. So welcome back to the channel guys. Today we're working on my 2012 V6 Camaro with the LFX motor. This was the fifth gen V6 motor that ran from 2012 to 2015. But the oil change process that we're gonna show you today also applies to the 2010 to 2011 models with the LLT V6, which is the predecessor to the LFX in my car. I'm not sure if the oil filter is identical, but we will have the correct oil filter for your vehicle linked down in the description. And in today's video, we are gonna be using AMSOIL. Now this is not a sponsored video by AMSOIL. We are AMSOIL dealers, but that's simply because they're really good oil. So we use them in all of our personal vehicles. There's plenty of other reviews out there. Today is not gonna be a review of AMSOIL, but it's what we run in all of our personal cars. I've had really good experience with it. Our reference code will be down in the description. So if you use that reference code on the AMSOIL website during checkout, it does help us out. So we really appreciate that. But again, not a sponsored video, it's just we like their products and that's what we use in our cars. To start your oil change, you need to pop your hood and the release lever is right here in the driver's side footwell right below the steering wheel. After pulling the interior lever once, the hood should raise about an inch and you'll be able to reach in right on the left of the center or right on the passenger side of the center line and push towards the driver's side and lift up. So you're pushing this lever over and my car is dirtier than I like it to be, <laughs> but I'm always working on customer cars. So I hardly ever get to touch mine. Our oil fill cap is right here. You can see 5W30. So we're gonna release that. And I always like to remove the oil fill cap uh, to prevent the oil from gushing out. It'll flow out more evenly from the drain plug at the bottom. Now, sometimes removing this oil fill cap will be a little bit of a challenge because the filler neck, which the oil cap goes into right below, also move. So I'll pop off this cover right here and you can see the oil fill neck that the cap goes into also has some play in it. So sometimes that'll be fighting you a little bit as you go to remove the oil fill cap. Our oil filter is right here. It's a nice top mount cartridge style. So much easier to change than a bottom mount. And the dipstick is right next to that. So everything's right here, which is pretty convenient. I have noticed that these engines do tend to burn a little bit of oil. Obviously that's gonna vary per motor, but I would recommend checking your oil regularly just to make sure you're not low. Now something your car most likely does not have is an oil catch can. I'm running one from Elite Engineering and I highly recommend if you have a direct injection motor or a DI engine like this is to add a catch can. This will prevent oil buildup on your valves. So it's been about 5,000 miles since my last oil change. All right, so you can see there we're about half full. I do run a bigger catch can on my truck with the V8 because it does tend to have a little bit more oil blow by. Now I don't have a video install guide on this catch can. It's very straightforward. You can see it just intercepts your PCV line that would normally run from here down to the back corner. Um, and it has a very easy bracket mount. Um, I'll have a link to this in the description if you wanna pick one up. And at some point I'll come out with an install guide, but it's very straightforward, but I do recommend it. If you're planning to keep your vehicle for a while, it's just gonna help your engine run a lot cleaner and more efficiently. So as we step under the car, I'm just gonna show you a few of the things that we've worked on over the years. And we have a lot of video shot that we have never gotten around to. So hopefully that'll interest you in coming back to the channel for more V6 videos. But we have an ACS front lip here. We have white line front and rear sway bars that we upgraded to this car, as well as a ZL1 uh, big brake kit. Uh, so we have the six pistons up front and then the four pistons in the rear. We also are running a square tire setup. So we are running the same size rear wheels up in the front. That way I can actually rotate my tires a little bit. We also have a solo performance uh, resonated exhaust. Actually, I really like this exhaust a lot and been wanting to do a review of that. It's been on the car for years. All these mods have been on the car for years. The only thing I really haven't done is an upgraded suspension. So we are planning to do Bilstein's most likely, maybe a bag setup, but probably Bilstein coilovers. We actually did a full motor swap on this. So as I mentioned, sometimes these oil uh, engines are known for burning oil. And in about 5,000 miles, my engine was about three quarts low. And you know, 5,000 miles, I wasn't checking it regularly. There's no warning lights inside, but I knew I was coming due because it had been five, 6,000 miles well within the, the range. The oil life tracker hadn't indicated that you needed a new oil change. Not that I would suggest fully trusting that oil life tracker, but it was three quarts low and the engine seized on me. So definitely check your oil. If you have an LFX, make sure it's not running low. There was no oil leaks below the car when we pulled that motor out, there was, it was bone dry, completely clean underneath. I had done all the oil changes, so no oil leaks. So the only thing that could have happened to that oil was, you know, getting burned up 
over those 5,000 miles. So definitely check it. This motor has not been as bad with burning oil, definitely a lot better. I might be about a quart low between five to 6,000 miles, but definitely I don't know what happened with that three quarts being low after that same amount of time. So keep an eye on it, be safe, but let's drain the oil out of here and keep going along with the oil change. So the drain plug is right here on the passenger side. It's a 15 millimeter. All right, and if you're not in a rush, you can just let it drain for a while. All right, so we've let this drain for about 20 minutes. If the oil is a little bit warm, that works better, but just be careful not to burn yourself. It does get hot. Now, this bolt has a washer built into it, so it is a good idea to change this bolt out occasionally. I'll snug this up. You do not want to over tighten this. Your pan is normally aluminum, and these bolts are steel, so the harder metal is the steel bolt, and that will strip out your oil pan very quickly, and we'll have the torque spec for this down in the description. We're gonna dump out our catch can and clean that out. Now you can see that was actually all oil in there. Sometimes in the winter, these will get condensation inside, so you can have like a milkshake mixture. Some oil catch cans will actually tell you to remove them in the winter, but I've never had a problem with that. But just make sure you're checking it regularly so that it's not over full and actually uh, backing up your PCV system, because that would not be good. And I do like this catch can design better than the ones that have the drain plugs on the bottom. In my experience, those drain plugs always get clogged. It's just much easier to be able to unscrew the bottom and then just dump it. That's nice and snug. Now, before draining the oil at the bottom, it's a good idea to release the oil filter because some oil will be trapped in here. And when you open this up, that oil will drain down to the pan. This is a 24 millimeter socket. It's not a bad idea to remove your engine cover as well while you're doing this job, even though it's not necessary. The cover is not normally painted like mine is, so any oil that you get onto that plastic will stain it. All right. So there's some debris falling from this line right there. So I've changed the oil on this many times, um, and I've never had this happen, but you can actually see that the plastic shroud or plastic sheathing that's around the wire here, around this wire loom, is just breaking apart. I'm just pulling this apart, and it's like crumbling. Here's a piece that I was able to rip off. And some of this unfortunately just fell in my oil filter housing there, so I'm gonna have to get that out. But this is the original harness that came with the car. So this was transferred from my old motor to this new one. So that could be part of the issue. It's just, it's old now, it's almost 10 years old. So if you're getting ready to pull your oil filter how, uh, out, you might wanna make sure that this is not brittle like this. And if it is, get this cleaned up first. And I'm gonna put some Tessa tape around this to protect those wires. I'm gonna clean this up a little bit and then we'll get the oil filter put in. All right, so here we have our oil filter housing. Finally, I cleaned out all those plastic shards. So we're gonna pop this out. Now I'm glad this actually happened. You'll notice that on this end, there's a rubber little seal and there's not on this end. That's because it stayed in here. So when you pull that off, you wanna make sure that this rubber seal comes out because if you stack two of these in here, you are not gonna have a proper seal and you're gonna get oil going where it shouldn't be instead of through the filter. Now there's not a top or a bottom to this, it does not matter. Just press that in. Now the kits do include a new gasket for around the oil filter housing cap. I'm just gonna take a pick tool. Now be careful not to score the metal as you use a pick tool. So if you're using a sharp one, just be careful. All right. I'll pop that back in. All right, and then we're gonna torque that down to spec, which as it says right on the top is 25 Newton meters. Now we're gonna add six quarts of the 5W30. If you're like me and you're used to working with five quart jugs, you gotta remember that the Amsoil bottles are usually gallons or four quarts. So don't pour this in, think you've added five quarts and forget to add that fifth one in. All right, so we've popped our oil fill cap back on and I'm gonna show you how to check your dipstick. So it's always a good idea after an oil change to always check the dipstick and make sure it's in the right range. You will wanna make sure that the car is parked on a level surface. And basically you want the oil to be between these two hash marks. Usually um, this is about a quart of oil difference from the top to the bottom. Now I'm not sure if it's one quart on this car, you would have to double check that in the owner's manual and I'll try to have that link down in the description, but you want it to be somewhere in the range between these two sections of hash marks. And just put it down there for a second. And one trick that really helps with this if you're having trouble reading it, is hitting this with some brake fluid cleaner because um, that really completely dries off the dipstick 
and clearly shows where the oil is. But you can see right there, we're at the very top of that hash mark right there, and that means we're completely full. Now that we're done, let's show you how to reset the oil life tracking system. So I normally reset my trip A so I can keep track of the miles. So you're gonna use the circle wheel on the left stalk here to navigate through the menus. If you hold down, if you hit menu, it's gonna alternate between these two menu options. So one's trip information, the other one's vehicle. So we're gonna to go to trip A right here, and then we're gonna hold down the button on the end of the stalk. All right, so we're reset to zero right there. And now we're gonna go over to the vehicle information window and we're gonna go over to oil life and you can see right there it says I have 35% remaining and this is where these oil life trackers aren't completely accurate. I'm at a year mark and normally you should change oil within a year even though I'm under miles, so I'm at 5,000 miles. So we're gonna do the same thing, press the control set button on the end, use the wheel to go up to yes and then we're gonna hit yes. All right, and as you can see now, we're at 100%.